you this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for making it possible for us to be here. Thank you. We honor you. We magnify you. We praise you. We bless you. We exalt you. of eternal life. Let our lives, let our destinies not be the same again. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Change us, transform us. In Jesus, much less day we pray. And everybody said, Amen. If you're glad to be in God's house this morning, can you put your hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've been talking about maybe you don't know the focus of this year's converge. We've been talking about the Christian marriage. Christian marriage. And we started laying the foundation for a wonderful Christian marriage. And then Pastor Divine started that on Friday. Praise the Lord. She started that on Friday. She talked about the love component on Friday. Then on Saturday, she talked about knowledge component. If you missed any part of this, any of these meetings, you have missed. You missed seriously. But the only thing that will help you is that, thank God, they were recorded. So I want to encourage you, even if you were here, even if you are here you need to go back and listen to those messages again and what again listen to them and leave them if somebody heard what i'm saying listen to them and what and leave them it's very important go and practice the things that you heard the things that you learned in that series praise the lord so yesterday she talked about values she talked about principles she talked about skills so for having a wonderful relationship praise the lord today i'm going to be discussing a crucial component or ingredient that makes christian marriages successful this component is stronger than love how do i know i heard it from pastor david obwelli this is the, one, the fact this is the strongest component that keeps marriages together because i've seen people that were high school sweethearts that broke up i had a very um, wonderful person he said in fact when they didn't have money they were in love by the time they crossed over to the u.s he became a successful surgeon she was also a surgeon she became a successful surgeon money was everywhere they broke up because the lady didn't see any need for him again she could be on her own that's how that relationship ended you know. praise the lord so love is not enough tell them but love is not enough oh. love is not enough there are even people that take advantage of love. They are loving them. They will not be misbehaving. Yes. After all, you'll be loving them. They say, after if I do it, she will forgive me. If he does it, you know, if I do it, he will forgive me. So there are people like that that take advantage of love and don't walk towards the success of the marriage. And you see that marriage still break up. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? So, um, so love is important. But 
it's not enough. So what I'm going to share with you today is very, very important. I didn't know this till I came into Dominion City. And that's why you are in one of the best places you can be. I hear what I'm saying. You see, this church is one of the best places you can be. And I want to encourage us to be proud of your church. You are in one of the best places, I'm telling you. It's one of the choicest ministry for this time. It's one of the most balanced. Let me tell you what brought me to Dominion City. What made me stay? It's marriage. The teaching on marriage, I had something I've never had before. I said, I'm safe here. And my children are safe here. That's how I joined. Because when I came into, how did I come into this ministry? I was pushing pastor. I was JCF president. I was pushing pastor to invite him for a program. So they told me he would be in Port Harcourt. So we, I am my whole esco. We went to Port Harcourt. So it was in that meeting in Port Harcourt that I decided. I've been following pastor, coming for programs, reading his, listening to messages. I had all, all his members. I was in the ministry. But after hearing you pastor thought in that meeting about marriage after the thing he thought i said bros stop looking you are in the right place sit down and like one of my pastors used to say say sit down let me pastor you humble yourself tell your neighbor humble yourself sit down so that you can be what pastor. let your life be organized because some of us are in church but we we don't humble ourselves the things the pastor is teaching is his opinion you can't grow like that and you can't get the best of that ministry i hear what i'm saying the bible said that with meekness receive what the engrafted word which is able to save your word your soul if you are not meek you can't receive the word of god if you're proud and over bloated to be proud is like to be filled with air like a balloon you can't put air into a full balloon is it possible you can't put air you have to release the one inside for you to be able to put another one a lot of us come to church like that food bloated you know everything that's why you've not learned anything who will teach you when you know everything it's not possible many years ago god taught me this thing he said for instance you need a book and it's this right hand you used to collect it somebody come and give me a book bring a book and come and bring your own book and come and give me a, collect a big one or a bible collect that one. Uh -huh. give me give me give me now i need the book now i say i need the book give me give me put it in my hand i can't get it because my hand is what is full so i have to drop this one and then i can't get it may see for you to really learn you need to unlearn is somebody heard what i'm saying all those things your grandfather your uncle your great grand uncle your ancestors have taught you you need to unlearn them the wrong things you you need to unlearn them those things you have been doing that are not working you need to what unlearn and tell your neighbor you need to unlearn them so that you can learn what the right thing that's the truth I'm telling you the truth now that's why you've been here you're not changing your life is not changing your finance is not changing your character is not changing because you don't want to learn and some people are confused about it they don't understand it no you have to unlearn the wrong things for you to learn what the right things so I want to encourage especially when we teach on marriage come with an open heart if somebody heard what I'm saying whether it's on a Sunday service or in matters of the heart, come with an open heart. And I want to encourage us in this church to begin to attend our matters of the heart. It's our relationship program is on the third week of every month. Whether you are married or not, you will learn things that will help you. And that will help, even if you've crossed a certain stage, maybe you're no longer single, you're no longer searching, you're no longer dating, you're no longer courting, you will learn something to help somebody, your sister, your friend your daughter your son your brother is somebody hear what i'm saying so let's this is our meeting god has anointed us for this thing we are doing dominion is anointed for this thing 
a lot of things are happening in marriages and families in these last days. But this place, we don't shake. We are anointed for it. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? This is a ministry I've hardly ever heard of a pastor divorcing. I've hardly ever heard it. I've hardly ever heard of even members divorcing. But there are some places like Rain. Especially if it's a real correct Dominion City member, not somebody that is hanging on the fence with one leg. There are things here that secure you. If you are here and you follow the things we are teaching, you'll be safe. Do you hear what I'm saying? And of course, there are some other good ministries out there doing a good job. But I can tell you, I'm sure of this one. And everybody said amen. So today I want to discuss a crucial um, ingredient that will make your Christian marriage successful. Like I said, this is stronger than love in preserving Christian marriages. This factor does not depend on feelings. It is constant, no matter the season. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Now, what is this important ingredient for successful Christian marriage? It is called covenant. Somebody say covenant. Somebody say covenant. I didn't hear you. Somebody say covenant. This is one major thing that will preserve your marriage and keep it intact in the face of the greatest storms. In the face of everything. You know, in the Bible, Jesus was talking about a man that two men that went to build. One built his house on the, I think that's in Matthew chapter 7. Built his house on the rock. The other one built his hands on the sand. And the Bible says that the wind blew. The same wind hit the two houses. The, f the, the, the rain fell. The floods came. Now, what is the wind? You know, okay, let's start with the floods. Or, okay, the rain. What is the rain? The rain is the blessings of God. There are marriages, it is the blessings of God that have damages, like the one I told you. When they didn't have anything, they were in love. They were normal. When they began to get things, maybe rise in height, have children, they got conceited. The second one, the rain. Okay, the rain. we've talked about the rain. The second one is what? The flood. What is the flood? Satanic attacks. Satan attacks marriages. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? Satan attacks marriages. That's why a lot of marriage ministries are having a lot of attacks. So pray for us. I know a ministry in Lagos that were doing a marriage conference. In the middle of the conference, both of them divorced. The, the marriage broke up in the middle of the conference. I know another meeting in the US. I know the lady. I know the man. The man is a bishop. The woman is a prophetess. They had a beautiful relationship conference teach me to love and just a month or so after that they had a very embarrassing divorce I also heard of a story I think that witches went on a one year fast one year in South Africa to attack Christian marriages especially the marriages of pastors can you imagine one year fast because the devil knows that family is the foundation of society if you damage family you have damaged the society see what's happening to the united states that society is damaged look at what's happening all over europe damaged and the systems are coming crumbling down and this is what they are trying to introduce in africa one way or the other if you don't agree, they come against you. Okay, see what happened to Uganda. World Bank. Is it World Bank? World Bank rejected, stopped giving them a loan because they passed an anti-gay law. Brethren, wake up. You see, the devil and his agents are violent and they're not sleeping. What concerns loan? Some of the people that should benefit from loan loan don't even know that government passed a law. Those people in the villages that don't have television, don't have radio, they don't know anything about gay, they don't know anything about gay law. But they, they deprive them of what? Of, and it's something they've been doing. All the nations, I remember when Jonathan did his own, they deprived us of AIDS because of our stand. Ghana now is reverting and they're already beginning to threaten them. But well, let me tell you something. 
you see africa is the last stand just like every time the nations of the world are in trouble they always run to africa is in your bible when there was famine on two occasions where did abraham run to africa egypt when they chased the messiah where did jesus where did jesus parents run to egypt so we must understand this that is why everybody is coming after africa you see some of the things happening on the scene <laughs> like the cool stuff and the threats i wish our people in government can see but the problem is that they are blinded by greed by selfishness and they have put it themselves into a mess that they find difficult to come out many people we put in the government don't give a damn about you they don't give a damn about the nation they think only about what themselves why are you bothering yourself a nation have done a coup removed a leader that is corrupt that even manipulated elections and you have you have not people have not eaten your people are dying of hunger you are importing ammo tanks to go and fight them and they are your neighbor i don't know where these things go. but when you look at it from you know you may not understand when you look at it you'll be like this man is not okay but when you look at it from birth view you see the people because the, the west wants africa to keep dependent they want us to feel we are poor but we are not poor they are the ones that are poor a lot of the resources that are sustaining the world are coming from africa is somebody hear what i'm saying at this time most of the world's gold is in africa most of the world's diamond is in africa most of the world's precious stone is in africa a great deal of the world's petroleum resources are in africa and a great deal of the supply of natural gas for this land is in africa the amazing thing is that the richest african nations are the most broken nations central africa republic there's no treasure they don't have there's no there's nothing they don't have gold diamond they, everything and the western nations have made sure they've broken up that nation into gangs just so that they can you say that the people are fighting yet planes are flying in and mining things but they are shooting how do you, how can you bring in a plane when people are shooting because the people that are shooting and the owners of the plane are together so we must understand these values are you getting what i'm saying and i thank god that we have african ministers that are rising you know you know when i look now i, I don't have much desire and when it comes to ministry now i can look around and find models for almost everything yesterday i was thinking about it is it healing ministry we have models is it finances we have models is it church growth now we have models there's hardly anything we need to go abroad to get everything is now locally what manufactured even in the secular world what is it music christian music african music Chris has gone as in we have hyper exploded even secular I, I was listening to something spotify said that the highest income that they made last year was from african music the highest income from african music so what is it that you want to copy is somebody heard what i'm saying what is that wrong thing you want to copy let's as god is is teaching us these things because what god is using you know his word to do is to prepare us because in these last days africa again will be the goshen i hear what i'm saying to preserve lives that's why you're hearing the truth and the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall what shall, shall make you free and everybody said amen so the rain rains can cause problems floods can cause problems satanic attack so whenever there's pressure on your family pastor divine taught us the secret enter your closet and bind that word that devil because most times the devil that is causing that pressure many of us think is that lady. it's not the lady you love she loves you you love her there's somebody behind that doesn't like family that wants to break the family why does he want to break the family he's fighting godly seed is somebody hear what i'm saying he's fighting godly seed he's fighting that because he doesn't know which seed seed of of eve is going to bruise his head bruise his government 
that's why he would direct you to make stupid decisions as a single. You're a Christian single. You just eject to read me. Eject to read me. Eject me dinari. Breaking all the value, messing up yourself. No, he's after something. He wants to break your home because broken homes break people. And broken people break others. If somebody heard what I'm saying, did you hear what I said? Broken homes what? Break people. And broken people what? Break others. Most people that become rapists were raped. Almost 70%. Most people that are homosexuals were raped by other homosexuals. They didn't wake up and it's only in America now that they are not indoctrinating children. wake up and feel i don't feel like a man bros is there no day you don't feel like a man there are many days though when there are bills and you are the man that has to pay it you say now nah, let's switch let my wife be the man so there are days you don't feel like a man though. if i even feel like a child there are days i wish i was a baby when you see the children running up and down throwing bread i wish i was still a child does that make me a child You see people now, I'm a child. You see a big papa with feed the bottom. I'm, I'm telling you, there's one old, an old man that he's a baby with feed the bottom. Another one in Japan, like he feels he's a dog. He went and got dog costume, cost millions, and he's now like a dog. The next day, the other you updates. So today he's behaving like a dog. He's rolling, he's, they are scratching his back. Papa, Papa Lolo. <laughs> Another day I saw that one today that he ate dog food. Is that no demon possession? And he's on his status. I, and the guy is an influencer. I said, What are you influencing people to be? To become dogs? And there are days I don't feel like an adult. I want to be a baby. I didn't know days like that. That you eat and eat and watch TV, watch TV and sleep and forget your sorrows. And you have rent to pay the next day. <laughs> Sometimes when we are taking professional exams, I'm like, who sent me here? You read and read and want to die. I say, oh Lord. At least let's go back to primary school. We didn't used to read like this. So that does that make you a baby? Hallelujah. So floods. And the last one is winds. Winds is talking about tribulations, challenges. Like a terrible wind is blowing over Nigeria. It's a dry wind. A wind of poverty. Trying to impoverish people. Many families now are under pressure. Under heavy words, pressure. If you don't understand that these things are what the devil uses to attack people, you allow that pressure break up your family. It's very common now for you to meet somebody to that will tell you, I've not eaten for two days. It's very common now. I've not eaten for two days. The first time we heard that was during the Naira, Naira crunch, the cash, whatever. Cashless policy. You meet people. I met people, married people. Our family, my family has not eaten for two days. We don't have money. Our money is in the bank. But now, there's nothing in the bank. The bank is bankrupt. That's why Christians need to rise to power because we are the ones that have compassion. When I mean Christians, I don't mean people going to church. I mean people that know God. Someone. You know, at a time like this, somebody opened his mouth and said that since subsidy was removed, that uh, carbon emission has reduced. That that's one of the gains. We have wicked people in power. Wicked people in power. Carbon emission has reduced because people cannot afford to drive anymore. People with crooked brains in power. Twisted minds. Twisted minds. 
or his carbon is increasing. The fleets have not increased. So my dears, wind is blowing here and let's pray very well because the devil is like this, this administration. They like winds. Every week they introduce a new one. Another week, they, another week a new one. Now it's the wind of war they want to bring. Trouble day, they sleep. In Yanga, they wake up. Waiting till they find Palava. Let's be wise. And if you're in government, be wise. Prioritize your people. Your people sent you there to preserve their lives, not to destroy their lives. Don't use your greed, your selfish, your egocentrism to destroy the same people that voted for you or the same people you claim that voted for you. If you say we voted for you, prove it by prioritizing us. Prove it. Let me not talk too much. We're meant to be talking about marriage. Yeah, but everything is affecting everybody. So, but these two houses, one of them fell to that treasure. Why did it fall? Because it was built on what? The sand. It was not built with on a solid foundation. Same pressure. Two different houses. One fell. The other one stood. The rain came. Blessing came. He stood. The flood came. Satanic attack. It stood. The wind blew. It still stood. Why? It was founded on what? On the rock. Look at it. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 27. And the rain descended. And the floods came. And the wind blew. And it beat upon that house. And it fell. And great was what? The fall of it. Why? Because it was built on what? The sand. So at this time, you need to start looking for what to build your marriage on that will what? That will stand. Let's stop building on sand. It's from my village. My mommy likes him. My daddy likes him. When the jungle matured, the same mommy will say that it's not her that told you. He's a cool guy. I like fine boys. I like black girls. Very soon, you, when she doesn't rub on me, she will turn white. I like fair girls. When she waka, because she don't have transport, she will blacken. Hey there. Tell her never stop building on sand. Build on the rock. And one of the rock you must build is covenant. Somebody say covenant. Hallelujah. If you're here, say I'm here. The Christian marriage covenant is the greatest adhesive that holds marriages together. It is the strongest foundation to build your marriage on. It is the greatest enhancer of your marriage. So let's get into it. The Christian marriage covenant. Let's introduce. Let's start with an introduction of the word covenant. A covenant, what is a covenant? It's an agreement between two or more parties that is entered in the presence of a third party and it's based on an oath with obligations and benefits for honoring it and sanctions for dishonoring it so it's an agreement between two or more what parties it could be between two people it could be between three people it could be between a whole community So that agreement has terms then be, there will always be a third party to witness that agreement and to hold them what accounting and there's always an oath there are oaths there are things you say the oath is what empowers the third party to enforce when you break it is somebody hear what i'm saying swear an oath, make a commitment 
and when you break it this third party is licensed to what to come in and enforce it is somebody heard what i'm saying and when you obey the terms of the covenant you will bless for it you'll get benefits but if you dishonor that covenant or disobey the terms you are sanctioned for it what are the components of a co of a covenant it's a, a covenant an average covenant has the following components number one there are two or more parties involved that's what makes it a covenant number two there's a third party there's a third party that is a witness and an authority or date that holds them what accountable so sometimes it can be a person sometimes it can be a government sometimes it can be a date number three component of a covenant they are obligations please note these things the obligations for each party that means each party has responsibilities he has his own part to play in the fulfillment of that covenant is somebody hearing me if you're hearing me sam hearing you so there are terms and conditions you always hear mtn they'll tell you this but what would they say terms and conditions what apply of course if you're in ethel you're not in mtn you're not entitled to any of those benefits is it not sometimes family members of staff are not entitled to those benefits so there's always terms and conditions so every covenant has terms and conditions number four there are benefits these benefits are blessings or advantages or inheritances things that come to you when you play your part well when you fulfill your part or you play it well then there are sanctions sanctions are causes or disadvantages or problems that come to you when you don't play your own part that's number five number six when i'm talking about components of a covenant number six tokens every covenant has tokens when you people have finished agreeing there are things that you bring mostly inanimate or animate object and not human to witness also the covenant you give it to each other as a sign that you have entered this agreement is somebody heard what i'm saying so there are tokens they could be gifts they could be rings sometimes some people plant trees like if you remember the case of um uh, isaac and abimelech they planted a tree this tree would be a witness you know, in many of your villages when your ancestors had entered covenants there were trees they planted that's there there are some trees that they don't cut because those are not normal trees they are witnesses i hear what i'm saying they are tokens some they bring stones and keep them some they mold stuff you can't touch it is somebody hearing what i'm saying then finally a lot of times they are gifts when the covenant has been fully entered they celebrate they eat they drink they exchange what gifts so that's how it is always every average covenant has about these seven components now what's the process of cutting a covenant now the word to cut covenant is the word berit berit means to cut or to make to bleed so what is the process involving in cutting a covenant in ancient days people would cut themselves maybe cut their hands their wrists you will cut their wrist and as this one is bleeding this one will cut his wrist and they will mingle the blood together so they say our bloods have mixed you have entered covenant some others will cut somewhere then drip part of maybe cut their palm drip the blood into a cup of wine or water or whatever drip to they mix it this and make sure it's properly mixed our bloods have mixed they drink it you know so people always find or they get intermediaries to do it for them what is the implication of that why blood and why that process of cutting yourself the implication is that number one can you notice this that covenants involve pain every covenant involves what pain 
for you to keep it you're going to go through pains there are sacrifices you must make to keep every covenant there are sacrifices so there's no covenant that will be you you can operate with, with convenience so there are sacrifices there's pain there are sacrifices sometimes covenants can even lead to death which is the ultimate sacrifice just like they say where there's no pain there is no what no gain anything that does not have pain forget it there's no gain there any relationship there's no pain you are the only one working hard you know sometimes how do you know you're in the wrong relationship you're working hard the other person is not working you're the one always calling 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 checking on the person the person is not doing anything that's a one-sided relationship get out of that what relation is a dysfunctional relationship in a covenant relationship the two parties have part to play this person is playing his own part this other person is playing what his own part there's mutual service there's mutual agreement is somebody hearing what i'm saying if you're hearing me say i'm hearing you especially the singles you need to note these things i remember being in a relationship i just what that i was the only one doing everything i'm the only one calling if there's a problem i'll be the only one to apologize the other person is never wrong ah osabiola i packed my bag and left i said this is a dysfunctional world some people are very funny they are the only one they are they are, they are the ones that are always wrong somebody is dating you he's beating you and after beating you it's you they beat that we apologize they are terrorizing you and even when people come to help you you won't allow them to help you it's called stockholm syndrome it's a psychiatric problem where somebody that is being oppressed is in love with the word oppressor we've seen it you know there's some things in medicine i have seen it real life you know we read it in book and pastor and i see it real life somebody is being beaten being abused in a relationship but that's the one always I'm, I'm apologizing. The other person is never wrong. How can somebody be beating you when you are not married? As in, was counseling some people recently, and I was just looking at the guy the way he was doing. You know, I look in the flesh and I look in the spirit. What I was just seeing was a wife beating. So later the lady said, I would like to talk to you privately. I saw Kapa Gemma. So the guy left. She started. Kawa, 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 kawa. I asked her, she this guy used to beat you. She said, yes. He has slapped me several. Because the relationship, she's the one walking. I don't even understand people. She's the one walking the hardest. It's a sickness. You go for deliverance. Some relationship is a girl bringing the money. Is a girl cleaning the house. Oh, the guy is not doing anything. Oh, and the guy is still beating her. Can you imagine? That's a sickness. So me, I don't do a man. Say, Pastor, what do you think? I say, break. To not walk. No, and, and I don't do, I don't play with lives. I'm a doctor, I'm a pastor. I deal with lives. I say break immediately. Siaba, Ona, Ben Nagi. I'm not talking about married couple. These people are dating. They have even fixed wedding. A broken engagement is better than a broken marriage. Yes, and a broken marriage is better than a broken life. Somebody say broken bottle, no me patarism. Did you hear what I say? Broken bottle, uh, zik, zik of Africa. So don't wait till they break you. So now start looking for who will plaster you. Get out of there. Tell anybody, get out of there. No pain, no what? Gain. The person must, must, must be bringing something. There must be a central meeting point. Why do people cut and bleed to cut covenants? Number two. 
lives is and why do they mingle their blood it shows that lives are now mingled together so from this point we are entering this covenant what are they saying our lives will affect what each other's life either positively or what negatively so if you don't want somebody's life to affect your life negatively don't get involved with that person you see somebody's life is messed up that's the person you're interested in your life will be messed up too did you hear what i said because his life is going to affect your own life what marriage is not about two broken half it's about two holes if somebody is breathing and mess let him go and fix his life if somebody heard what i'm saying you are not jesus you didn't die for him you should go to the cross and meet the person that died for him and look for somebody that is whole if somebody heard what i'm saying so they are going to affect each other both that positively or negatively your values will affect each other your foundations will affect each other anybody you marry his foundation will affect your foundation if you marry to foundation of witchcraft you will inherit witchcraft by marriage you just wake up in the night see yourself flying and you are wondering what happened you married a witch it has happened to so many people Lord. a lot of guys come everything has crashed they are wondering i see when you sleep all this i see myself inside water how he slept with a married person and he get deposit when you mingle with people their covenant affect your world covenant is somebody hearing what i'm saying they are whatever spirit they have they will share with you it's part of the agreement in covenant they give gifts poverty and what to madness or the on your talking that's why in, 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 in even now in traditional setting when you want to marry somebody in it i just am beginning i dress and i yara and i wow in a sushi because anything you don't want to your family respect yourself keep away from it so many of you have here now jehovah jehovah jesus jesus of of whom i Jesus of whom they told you. Jesus of uh, of Ongwa land. He was a Jesus. You can collect all the wahala and you want to solve it. Respect your I was in a relationship. Anytime I close my eyes, I pray. I see masquerade house. Dancing. Yeah. Masquerade. I want you. I'm not in masquerade. I fought that thing. I fought it though. They wanted to initiate me. Say it's not possible. I fought it. I was, I think it was even 18. Can you imagine? Deep my mad. How to initiate me in masquerade court? So it's not possible. And I was born, very born again, talking in tongues. I said, it's not possible. So what I did enter willingly, I will now enter by marriage. What's the guys dancing? So I said, Lord, what is this thing I'm seeing? He said, sure you want to marry. Say if you don't want deliverance to be your permanent ministry, leave that girl alone. <laughs> Thank God I listen to God. Some of you will say, No, Lord, I'm anointed. Go and meet a lot of ministers that are in hell. They are, they are in hell in their marriage. I was listening to a certain man of God. <laughs> he said that a particular man of God that was doing very well all of a sudden went and hired a particular lady as his secretary when they saw it they came for condolence because they know the lady if this lady only a wookie, wookie. there's nobody as beautiful as her in this nation but she has leveled many men of god read proverb the bible say about that strange woman that her house is the burial ground of many what mighty men that her door leads to where hell You carry fire and put on your bosom and expect not to be what? Tap your neighbor, say, Respect yourself. Be real. That's why one of the laws of dating is thou shalt use your brain. Calculate what do you want. Jeans are real. 
in a went 40 over 50. Then no so in a went 30 over 50. Unga mugini iti bore bo. On a tackle as a area, not tianya nimi. Respect yourself. You go and look for somebody with a higher brain. So average, you know, at least you land at 50. Am I not talking to somebody here? This is a very serious service, so I'm not here to make you laugh or feel anything. Just say something. You are AS. You want to go and marry AS. And you are believing God for miracle. Leave God alone. Tell anybody, leave God alone. It's amazing. I've seen doctors and I wonder what's wrong with them. Doctors have children that are sick like laboring for a whole lifetime. Wasted resources, children suffering. Because those children, you are the one that brought them in. By your, I don't know what it is, I can call it. If you have faith, use your faith to change your genotype first. Change it, then use it to change the other person. I confirm or no change. You will do the genotype for one year. Condition. And in different labs. Come on, what are you going to say? Then you can go and marry. Leave these children what? Alone. Don't bring in children into the world to what? Suffer them. I go in a book. I go in a book. I go in a book. I go in a I want to bring in a, a boy that is in heaven eating from the tree of life drinking chocolate rivers of living water I want to bring him the most time when children come in they start crying because where they are coming from there's enjoyment oh, wow oh 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 you don't know children are spiritual. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Destinies are interconnected. When you enter covenant with people, you mix. Someone say you mix. You mix with them. Their values affect your value. Their foundation affect your foundation. The spirits control them affect you. Their culture will affect your culture. Their ambitions will affect your ambition. Their visions or the lack of it will affect your vision. Their relations will affect your relations. This is Africa, not America. In America, you can marry to somebody and not know who is his father. Here, you marry the village. It's the village you marry. So it's not about I love him, I love him. Do you like the village? It is the village that you will marry. No, they say it now. That is why when they are wedding, the whole village comes. In my place, they come with gifts to your gates. And you must come and welcome them with gifts. You will come and welcome. If you don't, didn't they do it in your traditional wedding? They will not enter. Because a village is coming. It's not you that is marrying. It's your village that is marrying that village. So you don't like that village, respect yourself. Look for another village you like. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? Okay. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but I'm telling you the truth. So that when it comes out, uh, say you are recording this message. Uh -huh. I'm going play it again. I'll play it for you. You marry their village, you marry their nations. There's grace for cross cultural marriage. If you don't have the grace, leave the person what? You know. Ibo, you marry Yoruba. They enter, they say, hey, in this house, you'll be speaking English. What is your problem? And you are the wife. No, anything he's speaking, you'll be speaking. The mother will come, she will not speak to you in Igbo, she will speak to you in Yoruba and speak to your children. If you didn't give them Yoruba name, she will give them. Yoruba land, everybody gives name. Most people have 17 names. 17 names, oh. My son was born in Yoruba land. We have, we gave him three names. His name is Philip, 
Olua Femi, Ebubechu, Ebube, Sibodo. But he has other names that other people give him. And we are not Yoruba. What if we are now Yoruba? <laughs> My landlady, she says I have about 17 names. And any, when anybody visits, he will call you their own name. So you better remember the name. So, beautiful culture. So if you like it, go there. If you don't like it, respect yourself. You don't like in the orchard and they are called a genuine orchard. You're going to have a problem. One of the things she will do, she will disconnect you from that family. That's the first thing. Because they don't believe in that. They don't believe in, they run nuclear. They don't run extended things. How can you have money and be feeding the whole village? You don't believe it. So, so why are you saying she's fighting my family? What did you expect her to do before? She doesn't have family. Is somebody hearing me now? I hope you are hearing. You know, we real ear, not flower. You no know, PCJ says some people don't have ear. What they have is hibiscus flower. <laughs> Tell your neighbor it's not me, and it's not you. So sex is a covenant. In sex, you mix. Anybody that sleeps with you, you collect part of them. Yes, that is why many people have schizophrenia. They have different parts. Some ladies, in the morning, they are behaving like okay. In the afternoon, they are behaving like a makeup. In the night, they are behaving like Tunde. In the midnight, they are behaving like Yusuf. And you're wondering what did you do to her? No, you did not do anything to her. It's what she has been done before. You're collecting spirits, collecting impartation. Even sometimes you can't even recognize yourself. You're not confused. Because he collects catalog. You have been so genetically. You know, there are researches on this thing. You know. Sex affects your genes. You have been genetically mutated. That is why. It is advised for everyone to be a virgin till you want marry. Stop collecting. Yeah, the one you came with from your father's house. Oh, oh, tipa, tipa load. Ibu property where they are. Ena choni ge butengi ya. Ungo ungo, ofu ungo ungo. Hold yourself. No, no, my, I'm, I, my, the naysayers. They, their life is messed up. They're looking for who, for who they will mess up their life. Yeah, you will not enjoy sex if you marry as a virgin. Chapter 1, verse 1. Who told you? Who this virgin Eve before Adam? Who this virgin Eve before Adam? Are you not a product of that lineage? Okay, nonsense. The devil is a liar and father of what? Lies. And he has a lot of disciples and marketers. Someone has just marketed you. Just boom, 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 boom. Because once you cost covenant, she will say they give gifts. Oh, yeah, and you can gifts. It's gifts. There are some, some movies you watch, you understand these things. There's one movie, I'm trying to remember the name of that movie. There's a something like a compass, there's a polar bear there. They have each person has some spirits that follow them. Who can remember that movie? They did it as a children's movie, but that is not a children's movie. Each one has, they have, eh? Each, each, they have some, the demon is like a monkey. You know, they have things that follow them. There's something they call them. That follow them. That's how many people come. They don't come alone. No. You, you came with Holy Spirit. They, they came with Spirit too. As you came with Holy Spirit, that's how the other person came with Marine Spirit. The man is changed. That is why one of the preparations for marriage is, especially if you've been involved in premarital sex, is to go for what? Deliverance. Maragodo and Wiggy, because some of the way you're behaving is not you. Or Tunde. Or Namdi. And the ancestor that's following him. Sometimes you do. Is, is the native doctor anointing from Andrew. So go and go for deliverance. Who is really in Kechi? Because that's why when we say discover purpose, some people cannot discover purpose. Because they have purposes. So 
The Bible says, cast out the scorn and contention we see. Cast out the demons. They were fools of. Because all the choices you are making are not normal. In your normal mind, you will not make those choices. It's those demons. Some place they call them alter ego. It's those demons that are disturbing you. So go for deliverance. Get cleaned out. Some of you already have something coming from your foundation. Go and get clean. Don't collect another one's foundation. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying today? Because marriage is covenant. Sex is for married people because sex is a transaction point for sharing things. So when you are not married and you get involved in what married people are doing, you will get the same consequence. A man of God said he is in the healing ministry, a dangerous healing evangelist. Do you know how he got the wife to start carrying the healing anointing? Sex. He has taught her 13 revelation, 14 pathways. He has laid her and laid that it wasn't working. He started ministering it to her. Because in the place of sex, there is what? Exchange. That's how she caught it. You know, I used to teach that, that there are three ways power is transferred. Most times I don't teach the fourth one well. The first one is impartation, words. The second one is association. The third one is contact and transfer. It has three parts. One is laying on of hand. The other one is seed. The third one is sex. So, so if you don't like the anointing, now some people are not asking you now to go and look for pastor to sleep with, to collect. In the morning, I know my man, the preacher. And what people hear when you preach, they will hear opposites. That's why some people that come, in, some people that come after men of God, they're intentional. You know? There's a, someone who has said that in every congregation, there are about 25% of the ladies that will be happy to sleep with the pastor. They will see it as an honor. Some see that they're ministering to the man. Some came to collect something. Then some came to deposit something. Because when they finish collecting, they will deposit. Is it not exchange? The music will When you climb, you start prophesying. I think he's Holy Spirit, his ancestral spirits. Now, hope I can finish this message today. <laughs> but but this thing is true. Take it seriously. Tell your neighbor, take it seriously. So anybody you don't don't marry, don't go near to the person. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? Don't sleep with the person. And if you are here, you have an anointing, whether you're a man or woman or God, guard it with your word. Because anointing attracts the opposite sex. And many are not coming for your good. So you should have fence with dogs. You should have boundaries. I don't want to teach some of you to have boundaries. You're not here. Until you buy it, more buy it. Then you now know. To, I need to begin to. Is somebody here? If you're here, here, say I'm here. You know. So if you've been involved in premarital sex, it's not enough to ask for forgiveness. You should go for what? Deliverance. Because when you have sex, so many things are transmitted. You can have sexually transmitted infection. That one condom can stop it. You can have ST. That's STI, is it not? STP, sexually transmitted pregnancy. That one, if you are lucky and the condom is good, it can stop it. But there are those that even if your condom is still, they will pass. Sexually transmitted spirits. STS. Sexually transmitted demons. STD. Sexually transmitted covenant. STC. Sexually transmitted causes. STCU. This one, if you like, let your the, the 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 condom you are using be titanium. They pass through still. Spirits don't they don't they pass through war. She say, ah, if I, I I I beat them, we didn't get pregnant. No, you collected something. Just wake up in the morning. You think it's your neck? It's not neck. It's you just collected something. That's the way it used to do. <laughs> 
It's called Awo, Awo. Sarah, I don't know, I'm behaving like okay. Is it, is it, is it affinity? It's not affinity, it's impartation. Go for what? Deliverance. I would recommend that any couple pre thinking of marriage should go for deliverance first. Clean yourself out. Stop. There are things also you need to stop from entering your next generation. I hear what I'm saying. Some generational causes, stop it from moving forward. I don't know whether they do it in premaritals now, but I think I, we need to introduce deliverance in premaritals. There are things you need to stop. That's why you don't enter these things casually. Just have sex. Care. No. There are things you need to stop. That's why as you are preparing for wedding, you are in courtship. That's part of the things you should be doing. Do deliver. Go for deliverance. Enter prayer. Any gene that is not good, you will not enter, my children. Any evil covenant will not enter. Any evil foundation will not progress. If somebody heard what I'm saying, don't bring, bring, bring children into the world to suffer. Wow. I hope we can come out of this. Hallelujah. Are you still here now? So go for deliverance. So if you have been involved in premarital sex, it's not enough to ask for forgiveness from God. You should go for what? Deliverance. To free yourself from entanglement. Another thing that happens in deliverance is in sex is you have, um, what do you call it? Soul ties. Free yourself from entanglements. You have left okay since 1921. Or this 2023, you are still feeling for him. It's not a normal feeling. You are tied to him. You need to break that thing. That's why, have, have you seen sometimes people are in their marriage and they are still calling their ex? Still, cha eh? still chatting their ex. And he's also in his own marriage, oh, and still chatting you. You are tired. You need to break that thing. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? He said, no, no, it's nothing. It's just, uh, it's not, it's not agape. It's just uh, filio. It's just uh, uh, all tired. Because people have caught covenant. You slept. If you're hearing me, say I'm hearing you. So to so free yourself from these entanglements, from these spirits, from these evil covenants, from evil foundation and patterns, go for deliverance so that you can truly be free to what? Marry. You know, when we say, you know, who are single? How, how do we define single again? You say people that are what? We have our single people. People that are what? They are whole and uh -huh unique uh -huh. there's another word you are missing unattached some people you are seeing are married they're married though in the water they have children 17 yes spirit husband spirit wife they are married and this they fight some we fight them ever get into a relationship so we fight them ever marry then some when they marry they will fight them having children I have heard crazy stories. A guy come married to a lady. In the night like this, another guy will come push him away from the bed. Have a wonderful time with the wife. Yeah, no, no, guru bed. Oh, yeah, guru one is I'm telling you this story. And the person will leave. Sometimes the wife is still sleeping. She doesn't even know what happened. She, but she wakes up wet. She's wondering what happened. And she thinks it's the husband. That's why right. from month to month, they don't get pregnant. But anytime she sleeps, she sees herself inside water, breastfeeding. Having. I'm telling you real life stories. Sometimes they take the face of the spouse. I'm telling you real life stories. Not one, not not twice. A lady said, I don't want the game. She went and wore four jeans. The guy would just come do like this. All of them would. She said, Is it married? So some people are they're not really they're not uh, unattached though. They're attached. So they need to unattach themselves. So if you're having those experiences, you go to bed, you're having you know science will tell you it's web dream. Some will tell you that even masturbation is good. But check whenever you have those things, you have sex. 
do you, do you have when you under the anointing, do you wake up wet? No, there's something went wrong before that happened. So there's a transaction. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? So to really stop it, deal with the source. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? Unattach yourself. That's some, some people will not marry until they deal with those issues. Some will never have children. They will go to this, they will not see anything. Because what is happening is spiritual. Some, it is an ancestral thing. They have been dedicated. The family worships that spirit, so they've dedicated them. So they, somebody, you know, it's the way physically people can marry somebody. You know, it's where they can somebody, be trotter, marry a G, or marry a something. Say, uh, you, uh, I need this, collect this daughter. That's how it happens in the spirit realm. So I've seen some cases. The people don't consciously what is an ancestral thing. You need to be broken. Some it is when you started maybe sleeping around, you now collected one thing back. The person now entered your life. So if you're having these experiences, you need to be free. Because if you are not free, your life will not be normal. Whether you're a guy or you're what? I know a guy that says, whenever things are setting up, he wants to have a major business deal. You have this woman will come in the dream, and that's it. Everything will start. Some physically they will possess somebody and you say you are dating. You know, all these stupid people are doing and sleeping. When they find they sleep, everything scatters. I met a lady, she came to my office. So she was crying, I don't know what's happening to my guy. Anytime, you know, that since I met him, things were going well, all of a sudden everything has scattered. I know things working again. So I ask her. Mm. When was it that things scattered? She told me, Do you know the date? I said, Yes. I said, Okay, so when was it that you slept with her? Slept with him? Is it the same date? She is the same date. I said, You scattered it. Because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, by means of a warish what woman, a man is reduced to what? A loaf of bread. Another wicked translation says, To a piece of bread. Then another mean translation said to a crust of bread. Sexual immorality destroys finances. If you don't know it, know it. So what I'm telling you people, hold yourself. You know, yeah. Look at it. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26. Wow. If you're here, say I'm here. For by means of a worldish woman, a man is brought to a what? A piece of bread. And he said, and the adulterer will hunt for the what? Precious life. The husband will come after you. Some say the person that is married, she's married to the spirit. He will come up, he'll come after you. A guy went to do traditional wedding for to a lady. As he got there to just do the wedding, somebody started slapping him. He cannot see who is slapping him. He was properly beaten. That's the end of the traditional wedding. He never had traditional wedding. Properly beaten. Another one, the wedding night, he was properly beaten. <laughs> be sure that the person you are eyeing is free. And be sure you yourself, you are what? Free. And if you have been set free, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. He says, do not be what? He says, stand therefore in the what? Liberty. Where which Christ has what? Set you free. Don't be what? Entangled again in the yoke of what? Bondage. Because that's what some of us do. You finish, they finish delivering you. Three demons go out. You go again to Emeka. Collect seven. Adokachopia. A guard to Namdi. Collect 25. You now make it look as if we were not anointed. If the anointing is not working. No, it's you. That's reaccumulating. I don't know. I, I didn't plan to go this far, but God is addressing something. Because a lot of us are acting foolishly. Even some of us in marriage are acting foolishly. You are in marriage and you are sleeping around, messing up your life. Repent. Or you're involved in perversion. 
homosexuality, lesbianism. You think you are normal, you are sick, and you are possessed. Because the Bible says, the Bible calls those things inordinate affection. That is abnormal what? Affection. For you to have those perversions, there are spirits. You have to have spirits that cause it. Because it's not normal. The body is not used to it. So say, how can somebody be eating from toilet? That's what homosexuality is. How can a lady be touching a lady? How can a guy be forcing himself on another guy? It's a sickness. You need help. Go for counseling. Go for deliverance. Because it's not the normal you. When that demon leaves, you'll be normal. I've met a lot. And the truth is that many times, if you're like that and you marry, I've met guys that were homosexual and they married. They never enjoyed that marriage. They don't even touch the lady. They don't, they don't see her. Instead, they're looking for the houseboy. And vice versa. Go for deliverance. Let's stop. You know, one of the things that God accused the people of Israel, I wish, I don't know, but well, I need to wrap up in the next maybe 10 minutes or so. He said that you make things that are wrong to seem what? Right. That was one of his accusations in the book of Malachi chapter, chapter 2. There is nothing right about masturbation. It is defilement. You are messing up your temple. And God said, if anybody mess up the temple, he will what? Destroy it. There's nothing right about homosexuality. There's nothing, you know, you stylish about it. It's a demonic possession. You can quote me anywhere. I have dealt with them. There's nothing right about lesbianism. There's nothing right about bestiality. And many people that are involved in it were infected. They were raped. I can tell you, 97% of people that are homosexuals were raped by other homosexuals. That's how they collected the spirit. So they collected the engine that is causing the problem. The same thing, vice versa. Then some is online television, some is stupid, stupid groups online. But God is going to set us free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three, what are some of the implications of cutting? Your life will be better as a result of this relationship. So if you get involved in covenant with somebody that has a good life, your life will be better. Number four, your life will be in danger if you break the covenant. That's why when you mix blood, you are mixing life. So if you break the covenant, you do it at the expense of what? Your life. That's what blood covenants are. Things will go bad. You can even lose your life. Number five, this relationship, when you are cutting covenant and mixing blood, this relationship is for what? Life. That's what he's saying. Only death can break it. So when you're entering a blood covenant, especially like marriage covenant, it's for life. The covenant, the vow is till death do us what? Part. So if you break it before death, it will break you. And many have lost their lives too. Especially if you break it dishonorably. It's a different thing. You're in an abusive relationship. The person is oppressing you. But you know, get out of there. Breaking it is saving your life. But you are now the one that dishonorably breaks an agreement. You, know, you do it at the expense of your life. That's why it's a blood covenant. It's a life for what? A life. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? So all these things, you just say, I'll just walk away with from him. You're not walking away from him. You are damaging your life. Divorce is marital amputation. No divorcee is normal. Do you hear what I say? No divorcee is what? Normal. And that is why in most cases of divorce, the more the divorce, the increase of the probability that they will divorce. Anybody that divorced once, the probability of divorcing again is 60%. The people that have divorced twice, probability is about 70%. People that have divorced three times, ah, go and write, just go and write the date, they will divorce again. Because most times, the thing causing the problem has not been addressed. And most times, it, the person has a problem. It's not the other, only the other person, because it takes two to what? to tango it's one thing when something was really wrong in those cases you see that when the person marries they will be okay because you're, but a lot of cases is both ways is somebody hearing what i'm saying so when you're using one hand to point somebody how many hands are pointing back at you how many hands are pointing back at you four 
So if your relationship is having challenges, it's not enough to just blame it on your spouse. You yourself, check yourself. What are you doing wrong? Or what are you not doing what? Right. If you're hearing me, Sam, I'm hearing you. Now, what's the relationship between marriage and covenant? Marriage is a covenant, number one. Number two, marriage works by covenant. Number three, marriage is sustained by covenant. That's why it's important to study covenant, to understand it, and to apply the principle of covenant. Now, the Christian marriage covenant is a mutual, let's just look at that specifically now, is a mutual conjugal agreement caught between one man and one woman. That's God's, God's standard. In the presence of God, in the presence of their parents and other witnesses, it's caught with words which include expression of faith. For instance, whenever we, we are doing, um, um, okay, let me just list them, expression of faith. Whenever we want to marry people, we want to be sure they are Christians, so we ask them if they are Christians. And they have to express it with their mouth or confess it that they are Christians. Confess they are saved, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's caught with words. The words include expression of vows. So you make vows. There are things you promise one another. I thought I would have time. I would have read you some, but let me see. Agreement to obligations. So in a marriage covenant, Christian marriage covenant, there are obligations. Most times we say in sickness and in health. For richer, for what? For poorer, in sickness and in health. And all that. Till death do us what? So you say, I'm going to be committed to you no matter what comes. It's an obligation. It's a commitment. You say, all my worldly goods I give you. With my body I honor you. Or with my body I worship you. These are obligations. So you can't wake up and say, I'm not doing it again. No, you must do. Because you said, I do. You see, I do, you said. Is it, I did? When they ask you, would you marry this man? Did you say, I did? Is it, I did, you say? Is it, I did that they say? What did they say? I do. And we always make sure there's a mic. And if they say it wrong, so I will say, I will. Say, I do. I do means present, continuous tense. You will be what? Doing. As I'm not giving money again. No, you said I do. You give the money. And I don't, I'm not in the mood. You must be in the mood. You said what? I do. So, amen. So if you're not ready to say I do, respect your what? So, so the agreement, the sharing of possessions, one of the vows in marriage is with my wealth, I worship you. All my worldly goods I give to you. That's one of the vows. There's exchange of tokens. That's why we give rings. It's a token. Whenever you are wearing it, they say, wear this ring as a reminder of the covenant you have made today. That you say that all your worldly wealth. Eh? In one of you single, before you marry, ask the, the pastor, please give me the vows. Can go here, mama, mother, walk. Abu no, man, walk. Can, can change my mind. Because you see, marriage is a covenant and it's between three people. It's you, there are three people in that covenant too. It is you, the person, and God. And there's a, a fourth person that was not invited. You know the fourth person? The devil. Yes, the uninvited person. Adam and Eve were in the garden. God was visited them, visiting them, is it not? The devil invited himself. So he's waiting for loopholes, waiting for mistake to enter. So that is why you must keep that word covenant. If you're not ready, keep away. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? So it includes blessings, release of blessings. That's what we do. We release blessings. We even call parents to bless you. In fact, there are three levels of blessings. We call parents to bless you. We call other men of God to bless you. Then the officiating priest now concludes you. We even read Deuteronomy 28. Release the blessings. But let me tell you something that we need to start doing in Pentecostal churches we are not doing well. Don't only read the blessing, read the causes. Because there are causes. If you follow the agreement, you are blessed. If you disobey it, you will be what? You will be cursed. What is a blessing? Empowerment to prosper. What is a cost? Empowerment to fail. All of them are there. So I, I don't know, but I think I will start doing it in my weddings. I will read Deuteronomy, you know, we read Deuteronomy 28 from 1 to 14. We stop. No, go to the end. 
And because time out, they don't get me abbreviated because we'll 60 something. Can you imagine 14 verses for blessing over 50 verses for courses? Why are those courses put there by God? Because they don't want you to break the word covenant. They are to dis, you know, dissuade you from breaking the covenant. Why if sometimes do we preach about the causes in Titan? Because we don't want you to break that covenant. Titan is a covenant. Because these forces are weak. They are wicked. They are mean. They are rebels. Nobody invites them. They invite what? Themselves. So don't open your marriage to those things. Did somebody hear what I'm saying? Keep to the obligations. Take care of that man. Take care of that woman. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing, say I'm hearing. So, the sharing of communion, that's sharing of blood. So, we share blood. In the, you drink and you give the other person. We share body. So, at the communion table, during wedding, both of you become what? One. That's why you can't say, I don't. You have said, I do. In fact, you should say, I finished. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? The sharing of communion, you guys should be coming for weddings so you understand what is happening especially singles and if you're married come remind yourself because sometimes when we marry we forget that you're in covenant start living anyhow and you're wondering why is my business not working you are breaking covenant many ladies that's why they, you have not taken it it's not the guy it's you you and your big mouth you are breaking covenant if you're here say i'm here oh. We share communions, we make declarations, we do exhortations, that's we declare you as husband and wife. We sign the agreement, that's why we used to sign marriage register. It's not so that you have an evidence. That evidence is both for you and what? Against you. Is it that your marriage certificate? In your box. The devil knows it's there. It's an evidence for and what? Against. That I said I will serve this man. That I said I will love this man. That I say I will give to this man. That say I will worship this man with my body. I am not doing it. Even the angels will come and bring it and present it in heaven. Even God will come. And many times demons will come. So I, I've dealt with the case of a lot of cases of barrenness when they are quarreling. You can't take him. Because all the demons that are trying to stop you will come. The Bible says, whenever there's strife, every evil thing is what? Is there. Get in peace. Somebody say, get in peace. Business can't work. Get in peace. So, the signing of the agreement, the marriage register, you sign, she signs, your father signs. That's called countersigning, is it not? Her own father countersigns. Then the pastor now writes, this was done in my presence. What did the Bible say? In the presence of two or three witnesses. A matter is what? You agreed you'll be taking care of this girl. Now you're oppressing her. God will come after you. You agreed you will love this man. Come with me. Now you are fighting him and God will come after you. Because God is the first enforcer of the covenant. Did you hear what I said? Then he will license other enforcers. He will license angels. And many times he will permit the devil. Because you have broken what? Covenant. If you're here, say I'm here. So keep to the agreements. Tell anybody keep the agreements. We have people that witness the signing. We normally have fathers from the two sides to witness the signing. We record the sign. You know, the Holy Spirit was just opening some of these things this morning. I was just screaming. We record the sign. Do you notice that there's no wedding that they don't record? There is come and snap photo. That photo is for you and against you. That photo is evidence that you agreed you will love this woman. You agreed you will care for her. Now. So you see, some of you have marriage picture in your parlor. I can't give my to picture. But you know, it's not only physical people that take photo. As we came and took our physical photo, eh? Heaven's angels, so they are recording angels. They also came and did their own what photo. And Devo, Devo, 
they will also come and take without being invited. It doesn't happen in a wedding when you're entering wedding. Some people are taking your photo without your permission. Yes. And that's how they used to do. Taking your picture without your permission. So there's evidence that you agreed to the terms of this covenant. So whenever you begin to break it, there's, there's a problem. Is somebody here, if you're here, say I'm here, oh. then other things, there may be celebration, those ones are not compulsion. There may be dashing of gifts, or it's not compulsion. I wonder how, what kind of gift people will be giving in wedding nowadays after for subsidy remover. It's uh, a copy. Then there's consummation. Now, spiritually, you took blood. But when you have sex, hymen is broken. Blood is what is made. That thing is what consummated. After then, you people are bound, spirit, soul, and what? Body. In covenant. You must keep the terms of those covenants. If somebody hear what I'm saying, then after the consummation, the journey what? Begins. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The question is what kind of journey? A good journey or what? A bad journey. So marriage is a serious business. So singles going into it must be careful before they choose to marry someone to avoid dining with the devil or hindering yourself for no just cause. Better you go on your own. Face your small devil. Face your small wahala. Don't increase your problem in the name of marriage. And those already married must be careful to keep their part of the word covenant to avoid undesirable consequences. Example, causes or hindrances to prayer on untimely death. Wow, I think I will stop here because of time. I hope I have time to finish up the rest. Hallelujah. Let me round it up this way. There are three persons involved in the Christian marriage covenant, according to scriptures. One is, you know, according to that scripture, Malachi chapter 2 and 1 Peter. One is the man, the other one is the woman, then the deity, which is who? God. And they all have roles. God's role is to define the marriage. So you don't find out how marriage is, is from your father or your ancestors. You go to the Bible. Someone say, the Bible. You don't go to your friend or social media to teach you what marriage is about. It's God that started marriage in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. He's the one that says it's not good for a man to be what? Alone. So you want to find out what Christian marriage is all about. Find out from God. Someone say, find out from God. Go and study your Bible. So there's so many scriptures that will guide you. And I want you to write down these scriptures and go and read them. Genesis chapter 2, 18 to 25. You will see the purpose of marriage and in-laws and all that. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. You see where God emphasized that marriage is between male and female. Not male and male or female and female or male and dog or all those stupid things that people are doing. Malachi chapter 2, verse 11 to 17. You see that marriage is a covenant and it's properly defined there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 33. It teaches you about love and respect, two important components of marriage that God put there. First Peter chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. It brings you understand it then of marriage and shows you how to deal with divorce. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 20. You know the Bible says faith cometh by a word, hearing and hearing. So these are scriptures that you need to study to understand marriage and develop faith in it, both as a single and what a married person. Where did I stop? First Peter chapter 3, 1 to 7, okay. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 20. This one is some clear lessons and guidelines for sex, for chastity, and for divorce. Then First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, guidelines for finances. The Bible said, if anyone does not take care of what? Of his family, he's worse than what? An unbeliever. It's in your Bible. God put it there. So God's role is number one to define marriage. God's role number two is to guide the marriage. He does this using the word, using his spirit, using ministers. Number three, God's role is to guide, regulate the marriage. 
he ensures that the parties are committed to the covenant. He does this through the word, through his spirit, through ministers, through materials, books, and tapes and all that. And other people, if you're misbehaving, he'll get other people to talk to you if you're not listening to your pastors or your Bible or your, the Holy Spirit. Then sometimes there are last circumstances. That's what we call wilderness. Some of the wilderness you are going through is because of disobedience. He allows wilderness to teach you, to regulate you, because you are not behaving well in the marriage. Then the last agent he uses is the devil. He will license the devil to come in so that you can behave yourself. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Stop threatening that woman. You are, you are the one under threat. I will deal with you. It's yourself you're about to deal with. Because you see the lineup of people God has arranged to arrange you. I will arrange you. I will show you. <laughs> it's you that is about to be shown. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? The fourth duty of God in the marriage is to bless the marriage. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2 to 14. And then the final duty of God, the fifth, is to defend the marriage. That's why you don't marry without God's consent. There are at least three groups of people that you must get consent from before entering a marriage. One is God. Two, when you get that one, is your parents. And third, is your pastor. Then if there are other significant others. So you can't I don't understand people. You are making a decision to marry. You've not asked God. Who is a major, who is part of the marriage? Whether he's involved. What kind of thing is that? Number two, you've not asked your parents that give birth to you, that have the legal authority over your life. The physical constitutional authority. Number three, you've not told your pastor. I don't know where we get these things from. And tomorrow now, you start calling us. When jungle will match on. Pastor, I don't know what is happening. In the night, when I'm sleeping, you suddenly do kokoro, kokoro, kokoro. That's how they do. When they enter now, they don't have children. They start coming to my office. But I never knew when they were married. Or when they enter, which is common, the man started using them for boxing practice. Abu, Abu, Abu. They will start calling me. But did you take my permission? Did you listen to my instruction? So God is involved. And one of the people that represents God is your pastor. Learn to get spiritual authorization. Maybe Pastor, you will talk about that. You know, before you marry. Be safe. Tell your neighbor, be safe. Oh. Be safe. And everybody say, Amen. Some other time, we're going to talk about the role of the man, the role of the woman, and all those things in marriage. And I think Pastor Divine touched it yesterday. But suffice it to say that in covenant, everybody has their part to what? To play. Find out God's plan, God's part, so that you can maximize it. His job is to defend that marriage. And defend all the individuals in the marriage. I don't know now, but let's close with the book of Malachi, and we're going to pray. Malachi chapter 2. Can you put up that place? He said, I'm a witness against you. So, God defends. If your husband is misbehaving, report him to God. God defends all the parties. If your wife is misbehaving, report him to God. Don't go and fight the person. I hear what I'm saying. I've told you, God has... Did you see the lineup that God uses to correct? He uses his word. He uses his spirit. The person not here. He sends ministers. The person not here. He will send wilderness. Problems. The person doesn't hear. Okay, he sent people before wilderness. Donkeys. Unbelievers start preaching to you, talking to you. My dear, when unbelievers are talking to you about your marriage, you have gone far. You have gone what? Far. That's how I know that I'm out of order. Unbelievers are now correcting me. I remember one time in my room, it was one guy. Every time I'll be talking, talking, everybody that come into the room, just me, I'll just back. One day the guy just provoked about he had something. He came to me, must you reply? Must you reply? Are you not a pastor? Hey. Someone that is not born at all, or don't be born, go for again. The Holy Spirit said, You have gone far. Donkey is now speaking to you. Retrace your words. Your step. 
when outsiders are now the one warning you, threatening you about your marriage, you have gone what? Far. Retrace your what? Your steps. Then, if you don't take that, the next one is calamities, problems. Many of us, the pro that are married people, the problems we are facing, we are the one that created it. By not loving that man, not loving that woman. Look at it. Yet you say, wherefore, because the verse, chapter 2, verse 14, because the Lord has been what? A witness between thee and the wife of thy what? Thy youth. God was in that wedding, God was involved. He's even a priest. When we stand as priests, we are not representing ourselves. We are representing who? God. So we are representing him physically, but he's there what? Spiritually. The Lord has been witness. Anytime you bitter, God was there. They are recording it. They are recording angels. You think it's only offering the record. Anytime you slap her, they are recording it. They have a limit. We call it 10. Ipiagia 6. One angel is just soaking his koboko inside water. Oruago? Say, I know Oruago. Nine. He start press up. Ten. Ibakatam! Ibakam! He bind the word devil. No, it's not devil, it's angel. You can't bind him. And the angel is sent by God. So who do you want to bind? Angel or God? Tell anybody, retrace your steps. So quarreling with that lady. Re-examine yourself. And everybody said amen. Whom you have dealt with what? Treacherously. Give me another translation. Wickedly. You are starving her. You are beating her. She can't talk. She's like a slave in your house. A daughter of Zion. God's daughter. <laughs> oh, Coco, Bioko. The angels that we deal with here are warming up. I'm on a gym. It says, And now you've broken. Do you know why God was saying you are praying? Prayer. You know, if you read the previous verse, say you are crying, you are bringing offering, you are sowing seed, it's not working. You are praying, you are crying, it's not working. And Paul confirmed this the other way, as if Paul or Peter now confirmed it in the New Testament, is it not? It's Peter that confirmed it in 1 Peter 3. He said, I will tell you why your prayer is not working. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young. But you have been unfaithful what to her. And it's vice versa. Sometimes it is women that are terrorizing the man. And the funny thing, you for this small girl that is terrorizing this Andrew the giant. Amateur potty, you know, young kin, it's you get an egg bogum, a bagaga, a bagam. It's you know, the girl in a merry berry, up we are neat, or you go on a ladder. Oh, Nino, oh my, have we seen some people slapping people? Oh, Nino, oh my, or I see a word at you, oh my, or what to your zodiac, Nino. But you have been unfaithful to her. Though she remained what? Your faithful partner. Let me tell you ladies. When a guy is oppressing you like that. Don't oppress back. When you oppress back. You have lost your joker. I hear what I'm saying. You have lost your what? Your joker. God will not intervene. You have oh, self-help. You have employed self-help. You are doing self-defense. God will not come. God will only come when you are defenseless. Is someone hear what I'm saying? You humble yourself. Now, I'm not saying stay there and they kill you. That's not what I'm saying. But God knows. Talk to him. He was there at that altar. You know, many of you wedding, you don't even remember what happened. Many of you today, go back and watch your wedding videos. Did you hear what I say? That's your take-home assignment. Can't watch more. Open in my body. Open in my more photograph. Papa, okay, that snapped you. Go back and look at your wedding pictures. Remember that day. I don't know, but maybe next year we'll do this thing. As we are rounding up Converge, it will be marriage, vow, what? Rededication. In a year, everybody, all raw black and white guy gave you that day. We'll do it. Here. But we're going to pray today. 
if you've been breaking the covenant, you're not going to ask God to forgive you. Whether you are the lady doing your part or you're the guy. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? He said, the wife of your marriage vows. The husband of your marriage vows. Some of the problems you are going through, God asks me to tell you, it's not the devil. You are the one. If you will repent today, everything will change. I conclude with this, Pastor Divine said, this, what we are talking about is Christian marriage, not worldly marriage. Worldly marriage, their system is different. The spirits involved are different. But this is Christian marriage based on Christian values. Make your marriage a Christian marriage so that you can have the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand on your feet. Did you get something today? Today is marriage school. Our marriage service. Marriage school. Can you lift up your hands? I don't know where you are. Maybe you're single. First of all, can we pray? Say, God, give me understanding of what was preached today. Give me a revelation of covenant. And I'll advise you, go back and read those scriptures. Plus this one. Give me an understanding of covenant. Open my eyes to see it. Open my ears to hear it. Open my heart to understand it. Number two. If there's any way you have sinned against the covenant, ask God to forgive you. Remember, there are three people in this marriage vow. The first is God. Have you sinned against God? Disobeyed Him? Live the way you want to? Done things without His permission? Done things that annoy Him? Things that He told you not to do? Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to have mercy on you. Have you sinned against yourself? Involved in practices that harm sexual practices masturbation is a sin against yourself homosexuality lesbianism is a sin against your body premarital sex is a sin against your body ask the lord to forgive you ask the lord to have mercy on you. if you're already in a marriage and is the spouse you sinned against Ask God to forgive you, and later you're going to find a way to ask that spouse to forgive you. You've lied against them, you've insulted them, you've beaten them, you've gone to sleep with someone outside marriage, whether male or female. You know, some ladies in marriage feel that um, adultery is only when you sleep with a guy. So they sleep with other ladies. It is still adultery. And vice versa. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Him to have mercy on you. You've been involved in premarital sex. In fact, you can't even count the guys. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to set you free. Just be praying. We don't have time, so I'm just calling out the prayer point. Whichever has to do with you, be praying it. Ask God to deliver you. To break that soul tie you have with that boy, that girl. To disconnect you from those people. Their evil foundation, the spirits controlling them. Cry out to God today, asking for mercy. For some of you, that's why you're not getting married. So there's somebody chasing your suitors. So that is why you're not getting pregnant. There's somebody fighting the children. For some of you, that's why your business is not working. There's somebody fighting it. Ask the Lord to break you free from every yoke of darkness. Every yoke of darkness. Every yoke of limitation. Tell God you are sorry. Tell Him you are sorry. 
have mercy on me begin to plead the blood of jesus over your life as the lord to cleanse you by his blood you've been involved in pornography in pollution pornography is having sex with whoever is on that television screen it's virtual sex why masturbation is sex with yourself all of them are against god's word ask god to clean you out to wash you clean ask for the refiner's fire to come upon you to burn up everything that is not of god every evil appetite for pornography for masturbation for homosexuality for lesbianism for adultery you have a taste for strange flesh you want to taste something that is not in your house every time as the lord to set you free for let the breakers so tap for katoshi Ele deba zu de gebala to koposi kabaya Reba do se pe reke to se kabato ke labra katoska Can everybody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost This is a moment of deliverance Se bala to ke breke do se kabato ka pato le ke reke toska Ask the Lord to break every yoke of the devil of oil Every yoke that yoke of lust that yoke of masturbation that yoke of pornography that yoke of fornication you can't rest till you sleep with someone else that yoke of adultery that yoke of perversion that yoke of wickedness anger that you don't know where it's coming from lies that you don't know where it's coming from begin to renounce every covenant you may have entered knowingly or knowingly with the kingdom of darkness whether you entered from your foundation your fathers brought you into it begin to renounce it your mothers brought you into it begin to renounce it you got in there by yourself begin to renounce it Lord, we renounce every evil covenant that we have entered knowingly or knowingly. Let it break. Let it break. Set me free. Break every soul tie. Break every soul tie. Break every soul tie. Break every oppression. That thing that makes you angry. That thing that makes you lie. That thing that makes you steal. Your husband doesn't know, but many of the times you were looking for money, it was you. Your wife doesn't know. That thing that makes you beat your wife, beat your child. Beat anybody. It's a spirit. You collected it somewhere. Some of us is our foundation. Some of us is our relationships. In Jesus name In Jesus name Lift up your hands Can you say Father I come to you today In the name of Jesus with a revelation now of covenant I ask for mercy in any way I've sinned against you knowingly or knowingly please forgive me Lord wash me clean by your blood in any way I've sinned against myself knowingly or knowingly Lord please forgive me wash me clean by your blood in any way I have sinned against my spouse knowingly or unknowingly Lord please forgive me have mercy on me in any way I have sinned against the covenants that we have whether my covenant with you 
or my covenant with my spouse lord please forgive me i say lord in any way i've entered any covenant with the kingdom of darkness knowingly or knowingly please lord forgive me have mercy on me wash me clean by your blood and break me free from that evil covenant today i declare with my mouth that your covenants are broken all you spirits of darkness all you wrong relationships your covenants are broken your agreement is annulled i am free now from your obligations and from your causes i reject your blessings i reject your giftings i reject your tokens i reject your benefits pack your bags pack your baggage and live my life every spirit husband every spirit wife every spirit children the blood is against you the covenant is broken your agreement is ended live my life pack your bag pack your baggage and live my life in the name of jesus can you just open your mouth for one minute and just begin to pray rabato sheke pato leka rabata kapaka taka taka Jere bato prakato se pato le pragado kato kada bakata barakota kapakata Malaga bala barakato goto go shika palakata prakata Shefa sote sika Sita your covenant is broken your agreement is destroyed your covenant is broken your covenants are broken all you spirits of darkness every spiritual husband every spiritual wife all the spiritual children your covenants are broken your covenants are broken your covenants are broken and all the soul ties all the ties with wrong people your covenants are broken i set myself free i set myself free to live a better life and to marry better Kada basu ki preke tushka, rezo bato preke de sebe lege de kosi prakata ka. Shele bela gere bato ka prakato ka pala toke preke tushka pata kata. Lord, let the refiner's fire fall in this place. Let the yokes be destroyed. Let bodies be removed. In the name of Jesus, angels of deliverance, just everybody now lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus, can you say in the name of Jesus? I ask for the refiner's fire. Refine me, set me free. In the name of Jesus, let the angels of deliverance begin to move now. Everything from your foundation, not of God. Everything from your past, not of God. Everything from previous relationship or current relationships, not of God. Let it be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let those chains be fully broken. Let those bodies be lifted. Be free. Be free to live. Be free to love. Be free to live. Be free to love again. Be free to love your spouse. Be free to enjoy your marriage. Be free to have your children. Anybody here be barren because of any satanic oppression. I decree you are free in the name of Jesus. I decree you are free in the name of Jesus. Any yoke of limitations in our lives, in our business, in our career, in our ministry. We break it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you. I receive my freedom. I am free today. The Egyptians I saw yesterday, the problems I saw yesterday, the spirits I saw yesterday, I will see no more. Forever. 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 Now I'm free. I'm free to live. I'm free to love. I'm free to marry. I'm free to enjoy my marriage. I'm free to prosper in my marriage. I'm free to have children. 
my life will never be the same again. Can you say, Lord, today I enter a new covenant with you. I enter a new covenant with my spouse. And I promise to love you and to love my spouse from now on with all my heart. Thank you because my life will not be the same again. Can you say, I receive restoration for everything that I have lost because of this evil covenant. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that you are set free and you've received restoration, can you put your hands together for Jesus? Can you give him praise? Give him praise in the house. Give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. I am delivered. You know the old song? Praise the Lord. I am delivered by His blood. Once I was in the chains of Satan, I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. By His blood. Once I was in chains of Satan. I am delivered. And my charge to you is Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand therefore in the liberty where which Christ has set you free. Don't be held down in any chains of bondage anymore. Go and live your lives. In the name of Jesus. Don't be entangled again with the yokes of bondage, with immorality, with pornography, with masturbation, with lesbianism, with homosexuality. In the name of Jesus. Can you sing this song one more time, Project? I am delivered. Declare it with your mouth. Oh, I am By His word. Is one by chains of Satan. I have delivered. One more time, I am delivered. I Understanding of deliverance, maybe it's when you lay, lay hands or you fall down, you roll. Yes, sometimes that is necessary. But the word of God is a tool of deliverance. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is a tool of what? Deliverance. Today you are set free to be all that God has called you to be. To live again, to love again, and be loved again. To have a wonderful marriage, to have wonderful children, to have a prosperous family, to fulfill your purpose, to fulfill your ministry. I stand in the name of Jesus to declare this under my pastor, Pastor Chikudi Abana, my senior pastor, Pastor David Obili, and in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If somebody here knows it's been delivered, can you put your hands together for the Lord? For the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord.